Vegeta here! Welcome back to more Let's Play Super Paper Mario! In the last episode, we learned of the Dark Prognosticus, and Count Black forced Princess Peach to marry Bowser to create a giant evil black heart of doom that's now gonna eat all the worlds, unless we put a stop to it by collecting eight pure hearts, of which we have currently one, as given to us by the magnificent blue wizard Merlin at the top of Flipside Tower, and right now we are in Flipside on the second floor, and we are gonna be exploring it a little bit today. Well, not a whole lot, because there's not really a whole lot for us to do at the moment. I mean, there's guys that we can talk to, but they don't really do anything. This town's so peaceful, if you ask me, that's all you can really ask out of life. Yep, that's pretty much that. No, oh, you're gonna give me a I know what a save block does. Here, I'll show you. Hit this block to save your progress. I played Paper Mario before. I know how a save block works. This takes us back up to the tower. Wee. And here we are. Ah, the two of you return. Look, a door has appeared. This dimensional door was made to lead the hero to another pure heart. Yes, somewhere beyond this door lies one of the seven other pure hearts. To be. You must use your power to help Mario find this pure heart and return here. Of course. And Mario, I have something to give you that will aid you on your journey. It's a pipe. A candy cane pipe. You got a return pipe. A magic pipe that returns you to Flipside from afar. With this, you will be able to return to Flipside from anywhere in the universe. Use it whenever you feel you must return in a hurry. Alright. The Light Prognosticus t foretells that the hero will meet a Dimension Governor. And from him, the hero will learn the Dimensional Technique. I am almost certain this refers to my friend, the Flip Wizard, Bestovius. So go now through this door and seek out Bestovius! Well, let's get going. Alright, we have our quest, we have our adventure, and we have our first destination. Red Door. But first, a cutscene! <laughs> Black! The void has been ripped into dimensional fabric! Sorry about that. Yes, Count Black is pleased! All is gone as foretold in the Dark Prognosticus! Now it's just a matter of time until all worlds meet their demise! Black! Wow, that's the Super Count! Yeah, first you'll erase all these naughty worlds. Then you're gonna build a perfect world without war and all that other icky stuff. Yes, yes, no one likes the icky stuff. Yes, a perfect world. Sounds magical. <laughs> I can hardly stand the weight. Sorry I'm late! What in blazing progress? How'd I be myself here? What's going on? Me, 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 me. Oh, oh, Chunks, you big silly. Did you oversleep or something? I guess it's kinda hard to be on time, though, when you got muscles instead of brains. Hey! You can't fool me with that crazy shapeshifting hooliganery. It's me, me, innit? Show a little respect for the Count. You can't go a bar on his face, lass. Blah! <laughs> How delightful, Mimi. Almost as dapper as Count Black! Oh golly, thanks, Count. With you around, it's nothing but big smiles all the time. Hanging out with the Count, my, that's my idea of a perfect world. Heart. And here I thought Mimi's ideal world was a gem-filled pool with hunky lifeguards. Hey, Dementio! Have you been reading my diary? I mean, um, never mind. <laughs> well, different strokes for different minions. After these rotten worlds are ended, Count Black will make all your dreams come true. But for that to happen, we must follow the instructions of the Dark Prognosticus. Yeah, about that. Uh, just an FII. I got an urgent memo for your inbox. Apparently there's been some unapproved interdimensional activity lately. Yeah. I'm thinking it's the hero of the prophecy. We're gonna need an action plan for this guy. A dimensional interloper! And possibly the hero! You are sure of it, Nastasia! Interesting, mused Count Black. 
We must put an end to this nuisance. Count Black! Let me get this right in me brain. The ear on Nastasia is going on about. He your enemy? Then you gotta be cut me loose on him. You gotta! I'll give him a nice taste of old chunks. I am horrible with accents, guys. <laughs> Very well, old chunks. I'll leave the hero chunking to you. Do not fail, Count Black. You can count on me, Count. I'll rain down like a fat thunderstorm, I swear. Mimi, Dimensional, you should tag along. You can pro with this a proper chunking. Wee. It's all for like native springs. Hmm, I do enjoy a good chunking. Well then, I believe I'll head out as well. <laughs> so, hero, you would defy Count Black? Then hurry, for your world's end draws near. <laughs> Black! Well, that's not ominous in any way. Mario was called upon once again to save the world. No small task. It, honestly, the stakes are ridiculously high immediately in this game. Like, seriously. Other other games, even other games like Paper Mario Thousand Your Door, which end up being dark, like, they initially start out pretty tame. But this one's just like, hey! End of the world's happening! Go save it. Could he prevent Count Black from pulling off his sinister plot? Would Mario reunite with Princess Peach? A truly interdimensional adventure was about to begin. Chapter 1-1. The adventure unfolds. Look at that Mario 1 level. Oh, I love this effect. Whoosh! Line art. And the color! And here come some flowers, and their door. I feel the pure heart. But it's still far from here. Merlin told us to find his friend, Bestobius, to learn that dimensional technique. We'd better go find him. One more thing. If you want to learn about anything, just use my power. I know about many things. Simply blowing your Wiimote, blah 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 blah. She's... So, basically, Tippy here is our tattle thing. So, uh, if we show... Point it yourself and I will give you advice on what you need to do next. We need to learn how to fight. That's basically how it works. I never use it because I don't care. Anyways, in case you didn't notice, this game is a platformer, unlike other Mario RP- Oh, Paper Mario games, which are RPGs. And honestly, I- I like that about this more, because I'm honestly not the biggest fan of most RPGs, really. Like, Mario and Luigi and the Paper Mario series are really the only RPGs I- Other than Earthbound and Pokemon, I guess, but... Yeah, I've never been too into RPGs that much. So I do enjoy- and I enjoy platformers so much, so it's like- I don't know, I immediately fell in love with this game. And we got a Shroom Shake. A healthy drink. Restores 10 HP. That's basically the mushroom of this game. The, and the actual mushrooms in this game are overworld objects that you can't use and you can't, like, have as an inventory. Anyways, this is a squig, I think. I don't know the real- I don't really know the enemy games- enemy names that well in this game. We got a horse tail, did something about poison. Anyways, in here is like one of the few times you ever actually need to use Tippy for anything. Something's weird. This is not an empty house. There's something in this room. I can feel it. I can help you find hidden things. Why don't you use my power to look around? And you point at the Wiimote, and there's a door. There's a hidden door here. Let me make it visible for you. It's a door. Let's go inside. Well, you don't say. This looks pretty door-like to me. I love that Mario World jingle. What is this mega mustache that stands before me? And how does it have the audacity to dress my multicolored glory? How did these flimsy whiskers detect my secret door? Wait right there! Red shirt, conspicuous white gloves, jaunty cap. Ha! You are garbed in the rich cloth of the hero of prophecy. You must be the great... Hero! Impersonator! No. What a costume! You look like you leaped right out of the pages of the Prognosticus! This is Mario. 
He's dressed like this because he is the hero. Merlin told us to find you. Merlin? Only his full-bodied beard matches... Rivals my hairy magnificence. If Merlin thinks you are the true hero, you probably are. I, I think. Well, and as the ancient prophecy foretells, I, Bestovius, will bestow upon you the ancient secrets of dimensional flipping. For a nominal three of 10,000 coins. But that's preposterous! You can't charge to teach the hero of the prophecy. I think that beat that curse between the designs. Why not? Even the great and splendiferous Bestovius has certain expenditures. Why should the hero get the world delivered to him on a well-garnished platter? These heroes think they can get away with shaking people down for free skills, and running into people's houses and breaking all their pots. A mere 10,000 coins should be nothing for a hero of the universe. What do you say? Sure. Fantabulous! Wait a moment. You, you lack 10,000 coins? I should have expected a, such cheap scannery from a hero with a scrimpish mustache. Uh, I know you are determined to cheat me out of my due tribute. I will settle for just taking all of the coins in your pocket. Ah, uh, no. That's too much for me. Still you refuse? So be it. Though it makes me ill, I will waive the nominal fee and teach you for free. Do you agree to this? Sure. Scintillating! Let us begin. He was easy to convince. Flippity flimity flamity flum diggity daggity doom zippity zabbity zoom shaboom flip out you didn't teach anything you just spouted nonsense at us i bestow Elias, have granted you the ability to flip between dimensions press a to slip between the very fabric of space and flip between 2d and 3d well, what do you think? Mind-blowing, isn't it? What is this A I speak of? I assure you that if we are being watched from another dimension, those beings will understand. But you lack the mustache for full comprehension. Just remember that you can use this ability to find hidden items and secret paths. But beware, use your new ability to move along and you will lose HP. Let's try it out. Wee! Mouse cursor. And this is what things look like in 3D. It's pretty cool, honestly. I've always really liked this about this game. It's like, it's a really interesting kind of platform. It's like nothing that you would ever, like, really expect to see. And you can find little secrets like this sometimes if you just do that. And I like how it kind of emphasized the whole flat nature of things, because something like that, like that fire thing, you could not see that because it was flat on a plane that you couldn't really see. Now if we do it in something like this, we can find something like this. Or these boxes. But that bar in the upper corner there will indeed go away. And I like how this thi this power-up just kind of stays there. These are pal pills. And they basically gives you a bunch of 8-bit Marios that follow you around and will basically give you a little bit of a shield. See? There's eight of them. I like also like how they use this to like give the excuse of to why you come out of the same pipe that you enter before. Because look, like... You, you go down one pipe, whoop, I just killed some Marios. You go down one pipe and then you come up the other, but it looks like the same pipe. Also, this is how you get into this door. Science! Yeah, this game has just a lot of cleverness. Like, it's really, it's really, it's really remarkable and I, I wish this was more as, as popular as some of the other Paper Mario games. Anyways, we got our regular enemies, Goombas, Koopas, stuff like that. You get experience points for doing things in this game, which is interesting because it's a platform like that. You got a Goomba card. If you collect an enemy's catch card, you boost the damage you do to it. So that's an interesting thing about this game that exists. More than these pipes. I also like that the game automatically gives you that option, like, Oh, hey, you spawn on something that doesn't exist in your current area, so... Uh, so it gives you that moment of time to jump, and it's like, this game is really just, it re it's a really clever game. Like, I, I can't say enough good about it, like, it's got its flaws, to be fair, like, every game does, but it's just such a good game, and I love it. And I love all the weird random math diagrams in the background. 
Flower is greater than square, greater or equal to square over pipe. I love it. Like, what does that even mean? What are the, what are those equations for? Is that Mario math? Also, it's raining coins because we caught a flower. Anyways, there's a big pit, but we can get to go on the background for a little bit. See, it's, it's clever stuff like this that really makes me love this game. Like. No other ga game really does this kind of stuff, and it's just, it's fascinating. This is such a unique game, like, everyone should try this game at least once, I feel like. Just like that. He, he shoots pelts at us, and it's a little bit harder to kill. Uh, you get, if, if you combo enemies by bouncing on them a little bit more, you get more experience. I think. I don't know. Something like that. I'm not exactly familiar. I don't ever really care about that kind of thing too much. All I do is do stuff, and hey, it's a scoring line. Gosh, many scoring lines. I believe... There's this. More pal pills. Yee. But, we can also boing. Hi. As we go over here, all pal pills should connect back to us, I think. Unless I just despawned them or something. I might have despawned them. But man, like, I, I'm just enjoying this. This is just so much fun. I, I just, I love this game. Squigs! So many squigs! So little time! Your max HP went up by five! Yay! And that's what happens when you level up in this game. That's the first time I didn't take him damage. That's good for me. Oh yeah, I also kind of need to let this regenerate. I also love this music. It's like a this cool combination of like level one from Mario One and Mario World main Dream Remix, and then it's also it's also got like this own theme. It's like it's not just a repeat of those songs. It's, Everything about this game is so clever! I love it! It's such a good game! You should play it! Seriously, it's such a good game. It's really awesome. Die! And... This is this guy. Ow! I am getting hurt all over the place. Gonna... That was good. Oh, this is why this exists. Because if you fail, then you can't get out. You also... We can't flip in midair. Just to let you know. Just press the A button in midair. It didn't work. But yeah, this... I just... I, I love this game, man. I love it. It's such a good game. It's such a fun experience. Like... And I... And I'm, I hope you guys enjoy enjoy it along with me because it's definitely like it's definitely a game that I w think is worth experiencing. Ooh! This is a Mega Star! You throw to Mega Proportions as in giant 8-bit Mario! Yay! Let's wreck everything! Yay! Level up! I can understand how a game like this might be a bit off-putting for those who enjoyed Paper Mario 1 and 2. Like, since it's not an RPG, it's so vastly different. I know my sister didn't like it for that reason. But, I feel like that's kind of unfair to this game. I knew there was some secret back here. I feel like this game just is so underappreciated that way. Just because it, it's different from its predecessors doesn't make it a bad game. It's a really good game. And I got a triple triple card. Either way, that giant block that I ignored before. That's the end of the chapter. So, in one episode, we're already done. So, next time on Let's Play, Paper Mario, Super Paper Mario, Paper Mario 3, whatever you want to call it, we're going to start chapter 1-2. End of chapter!